Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ella and in this video today we're going to be looking at the yearly prediction for Scorpios for 2020. So what we're gonna do in this specific video is we're gonna take a look at a few major transits at a few major things that I think are gonna be important for Scorpios. I'm using Western and Kabbalistic astrology for this method. So if you are using any other calculation system, it might be different from the results that you're getting. But I'm going to offer you a couple of things that I think you need to be mindful in 2020. What we're also going to do is take a couple of tarot and oracle cards to also see any additional messages because the way I read usually the stars and everything is mainly intuitive and I also like to combine it with oracle and with tarot to just get into a little bit deeper of what are the meaning of these energetic influences. Anyway, so watch this video first and foremost if you are Scorpio rising because transits and predictions like this resonate the most from the ascendant level because let's say in my even own personal case I am a Scorpio rising and I find that all Scorpio, whether it's tarot readings or astrology readings, are the most accurate for me. I'm a Taurus sun, yes, sure, it resonates at times, but again, rising sign is the most important. So watch your rising, watch your moon, watch your sun sign as well. And I also recommend to give it a try and check out your ascendant ruler prediction sign. What is an ascendant ruler? For example, if you're a Cancerian rising and let's say your moon is in the sign of Aries, you might benefit from watching the prediction for the sign of Aries as well. So give it a try. It, I notice in my personal case it works quite a bit, but give it a try. I've seen this be, you know, offer additional insight as well quite often. So anyway, Scorpios, let's get started. So first and foremost, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the things that we're going to be covering in this video. I want to take a look at the shifting nodes of North Node and South Node for you in 2020. I'm also going to take a look at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter conjunction for you. I want to take a look at a Venus and Mars retrograde as well. These are going to be very, very important to 2020. And also a couple of things related to transits of Pluto, Uranus and Neptune. I think we're going to try and see how all of this works together. Again, this is going to be a brief video. There is going to be an extended version available as well where I'm going to look deeper. So if, you, if you're interested to watch an extended, the links for this and everything is in the description box. And also I offer a personalized consultation for 2020 as well. Check it out in the description box as well. So anyway, dear Scorpios, so I think this year is going to be quite interesting and quite transformative for you. So first and foremost, Saturn is in your third house still, and it's going to be in the very beginning of the year, be joined by Pluto, which is your modern ruling planet. Jupiter is going to enter this area of your horoscope as well. And for you, this is about your third house. This is about your communication. This is about the neighborhood, your neighbors, where you live, any kind of short trips. This is about your thinking. This is about your communication skills as well. So what stands out to me the most is that probably at the beginning of the year, well, it could manifest different for different Scorpios. I think there is going to be some Scorpios out there. If, let's say, there's going to be some Scorpios out there who will start really focusing on security, securing themselves, becoming maybe even a little bit more grounded not wanting to move so much. I also think there's going to be some Scorpios which will start taking the way they speak, the way they present themselves, the way they communicate themselves, especially if you have any kind of online business or any kind of YouTube or anything. You're gonna start thinking more seriously about how do you speak? How do you present yourself? There's going to be maybe some changes you're gonna be making. I also think that for some of you, you might be fearful a little bit. Like, can I really speak my mind? Can I really say that's on my mind? Can I really express myself? There is going to be this kind of things coming up for a lot of you guys. But what stands out strongly is that there is a desire to transform something. Let's say you used to be extremely anxious or maybe you used to be just maybe even jealous. For a lot of Scorpios, jealousy or even being possessive is a very common trait. Or maybe you used to engage in some kind of activity day to day that was maybe wasteful even of your time. I feel that with this Pluto and with Jupiter being there as well, you're going to take a hard look at what's going on, how you're wasting your time. Or maybe you always wanted to learn some kind of skill, but you always said, oh my God, I have no time or it's too late. You know, for me, this was always about music instrument. There is, I always wanted to finish learning music theory in a classic piano. And I always say it's too late or I don't have time. 
but guess what if i manage my time better i can do it so same thing is for you i feel like especially anything that has to do with your practical skills maybe even driving or i don't know um learning a different language or learning some kind of course some kind of practical skill that you've been feeling has been holding you back not letting you move forward. This was already a trend that started a couple of years ago when Saturn went to the sign of Capricorn. But I think there is going to be a completion of that. Like when Pluto and Jupiter are going to all conjunct in the sign of Capricorn, there is going to be some kind of really major shift with the way you present yourself. Maybe you always felt like you lack some kind of crucial, important um, practical skill that didn't let you move forward towards your goals that kept you know stuck kept you stuck in the past kept you stuck at the level where you are i think there's going to be an opportunity for you to transform that and for you to start really really moving forward here and i think that especially if you in any kind of business it has to do with media which is a lot of people these days right media communication with others there is going to be a major way how you're going to transform something i'm not sure because again it's a general prediction for everybody is going to be different on some on some level but I think that especially if you're in media or especially if you're working with your hands even in any way, even like artists, creative sometimes are also, I look at third house, I very often see it in the chart specifically of like uh, musicians, DJs, even like painters, artists, sculptors, third house is really, really important as well. What I see is that, again, something, re something regarding how you communicate and how do you, you express yourself is going to change in a major way. So if you want to have a breakthrough of any kind, especially when it comes to you know your career in media, your career in any kind of self-expression, this is the time to do it. And I think entire 2020 is going to be important, but the moment when Saturn conjuncts Pluto early 2020 is going to be that critical moment to look for. What's also going to be quite interesting is that in 2020, there is going to be a shift of North and South node. So North node is currently in the sign of Cancer, South node is currently in the sign of Capricorn, and this is for you about your ninth house and your third house. So I think for a lot of Scorpios, you guys have been really kind of um, upgrading your worldview, maybe even traveling a lot. I'm a Scorpio rising, I was traveling a lot ever since North node went into the sign of Scorpio, sometimes even when I didn't want to, always my life was pushing me to travel more. And I think that this will stay, you know, this energy will stay with you approximately until the end of May 2020. But after that, North Node is going to go into the sign of Gemini and South Node is going to go into the sign of Sagittarius. For you, this is your eighth and second house. So I think a lot of Scorpio has been working on becoming very, very independent in, in the past couple of years, just because I think you, especially here with like Saturn and Pluto being in the same sign, you wanted to have some kind of security that is not dependent on anyone. So now when North Node goes into, this, into the eighth house, what it wants you to do, it wants you to assess whether you are actually, you know, um, not maybe even allowing in some way to receive from others because North Node in your eighth house is going to make you want to, you know, expand your shared resources with others. And eighth house, what is eighth house? Eighth house has to do with sex, eighth house has to do with um, partners' money, even it has to do with any kind of, you know, credit, any kind of loans, any kind of shared resources, really. And I think that for you, this could also be the beginning, like if you especially felt like you're not receiving or maybe your sexual even life has been stagnant in some way. I did see that for a lot of people when Saturn was in the sign of Sagittarius for Scorpio risings, actually it has affected their eighth house as well. So maybe for a lot of you, if, if intimate life was stagnant or not on the level that you Scorpio maybe wanted it to be in 2020, you're going to have to really, really dive deep. And I think there is going to be some sexual, you know, nature encounters and relationships that's going to be very, very deep. Um, I think that your ability also to, you know, rely on others is going to be highlighted. And I know for a lot of Scorpios, you don't even want to rely on anyone at this point. For a lot of Scorpios, it's like you learned how to be stable on your own, especially since Saturn, I think, went into the sign of Capricorn. But maybe even before, when Saturn was in Sagittarius in your second house, it has really forced you, it has really pushed you to become self-aware, self, -aware, self um, you know, independent, reliant on yourself. So now, North Node goes into your eighth house and it's asking you, hey, are you actually so independent because 
you know, you you allow yourself to receive, but you just want to be independent. Or are you independent because there is certain traumas, certain things you're afraid to open up in front of another individual. You're afraid that another individual is going to let you down. And by that, you're blocking the abundance also that is meant to come to you from another person. For a lot of Scorpios, going to be a question. Because I do know that for a lot of you guys, ever since I think Saturn went, maybe even into the sign of Scorpio itself, relationships could have been turbulent. You didn't know where you stand with another person. And again, this is mostly for the rising sign. But also when Saturn went into Sagittarius, you had to become very independent. You had to be like, okay, I'm self-reliant. I'm reliant on myself. And now also when Pluto met Saturn into the sign of Capricorn itself, it only continued. So now when North Node goes into your eighth house, you're going to start you know, really working on opening yourself up a little bit, whatever it means to you. So for whoever is also, you know, um, I mean, no judgment here, but if you ever like wanted to score like a boyfriend, I don't know, maybe girlfriend who is very generous, this could be, you know, a time. Do it, of course, for the right reasons. But I think for a lot of you guys, um, you might be not so much focused even on... You know, I, I don't want to say that you're not going to be earning your own money here, but I just feel like there's going to be some events that's going to push you to learn how to collaborate with others. It doesn't necessarily have to be about money, maybe just collaborations, collaborating with other creative people or other business people. It's definitely North Node in your eighth is going to push you to merge your resources, your talents with other people. Um, so it's good to start preparing now and ask yourself if you maybe have some kind of trust issues, maybe you don't trust others. Because this is where, you know, a lot of openings, a lot of energetic openings for growth are going to be for you in 2020. What also stands out to me the most, and this is going to be probably one of the most important parts for you in 2020, is that Mars, which is also your classic ruling planet, is going to stay retrograde for quite a few months. But I think it's going to be in the sign of Aries for five or six months. So it's going to start in July 2020 and it's going to stay there until I believe 2021 January or something like that. And for you, this is going to be an area of your sixth house. Sixth house has to do with your work, with your you know day-to-day -day routine. Sometimes it also has to do with any kind of legal disputes. It also has to do with your health as well. But you know, I would say be more cautious in these areas. However, I think that because Mars is in the sign of Aries, which is its home placement, I think that for you it's going to be more than anything a moment for a breakthrough. So if you, let's say, has been in a job or in any kind of daily routine or you had debt even as well because this house rules debts as well, I think you during the Mars retrograde in the sign of Aries are really going to tackle whatever that issue is and it doesn't have to be during the retrograde it could be just during the mars mars transit through the sign of aries there is going to be some issue whether it is about your i think it's for a lot of people it's going to be about debts and jobs it could be about your health as well so do knowing this information start preparing make sure you know a, you are up to date you know with all your physical exams and everything Again, I don't necessarily see any kind of negative results. I actually think this could be quite a positive sign for you to get out. Let's say if you're with a job that you are underpaid there or a job that you really hate because you want to do something else. I think this is going to be an opportunity for you to really, really see what is the problem and to start developing a course of action to get out of it. Um, I also think that for a lot of you guys, if you have any kind of, again, dispute going on or any kind of debts, this is also going to be an important and crucial, crucial time for you to, for you to really, um, sorry about that, for you to really, for you to really focus on that problem. I think it's going to be very, very extremely important for you guys. So for a lot of you also who are in any kind of education or any kind of school, I think that when Jupiter enters your third house, you're going to find that studying or learning new skills is becoming better. And Jupiter is going to start its transit through the sign of Capricorn, I believe in December 2019, when I'm recording this approximately. I'm recording this in November, but next month. Um, and it's going to stay in the sign of Capricorn for major part of 2020. Again, there is also Saturn and Pluto going on there. So this is not like a typical Jupiter transit. There is going to be a lot of other influences. 
on this transit as well but still jupiter brings expansion and curiosity in whatever area it comes in for you this has to do with your third house which is your practical skills like i said in the beginning of the video you might feel like it's easier for you to learn new skills you might feel like the way you communicate is growing if you have any kind of again media business this could be a time where you could um where you could really grow it where you could really take it to the new level and because also actually saturn and pluto being there this change and this growth whatever is taking place is going to be something that's going to last and actually transform your life in a huge way this is when you can be in a point a one day and then find yourself being in a point like a 100 like this is the time to make things happen so do launch your projects do launch you know things that are important for you if you want to be heard if you want to express yourself in 2020 it's a great um, year for that i'm personally going to be starting a lot of new things for myself which has to do with communication media and even creativity in this year i think it's it's a great time to do that i do think also with mars being for such a long time in the sign of aries in your sixth house you're going to work a lot you're going to work a lot but again because mars goes retrograde in the sign of aries as well i think there's going to be a moment for you to pause and ask yourself whether all the work you're doing and all the efforts you're putting are actually worth it. You might need to like eliminate activities that don't serve you well. You might need to eliminate some activities, maybe outsource it to, you know, third party or something like that. What I also find very interesting is that Venus retrograde is going to start May 13 until June 25th. It's going to start retrograde at 21 degrees Gemini and then it's going to direct at 5 degrees Gemini this is going to be huge so and for you this venus retrograde is happening in your eighth house where you also going to have north node entering around the same time as well what i think is crazy about it is that you know for scorpio's eighth house is the house that you feel quite natural in because it's it's the house of scorpio originally it's an area of your life that has to do again with shared resources with sexuality with the merging with another person it also has to do with deep psychological traumas even occult abilities and when venus is going to go retrograde in the sign of gemini in the eighth house i think that for you i don't think it's going to be such a difficult time as maybe for other signs but i think this is where you're gonna go very very deep and try to understand why are you having the kind of patterns in your relationship that you are having? Because sign of Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So a lot of it is also actual intellectual understanding. I feel like that when Venus goes retrograde for you guys, what's going to happen is that you might be able to finally get out of either a relationship, a connection, or maybe a pattern that you've been having for a very long time. And when I look at this all together, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto conjunction in your third house of thinking, kind of like, you know, collaborating with others. Um, then the Neptune is still in the fifth house in the sign of Pisces for you. Uranus is in your seventh house of relationships, which wants you to revolutionize and change everything, you know, about your love life, about your relationships with others. Mars in the sixth house, for some people, it could be a time for also divorce or separation. And now also venus going retrograde in the eighth house and north node is entering your eighth house i just for me looking at all of this together it's like a major revolution when it comes to your relating to others when it comes to your you know relationships with others and also the way you think the way you think about yourself the way you think about the relationships the way you communicate maybe with others as well i think that after maybe even a couple of years maybe it's not gonna be a process that's gonna start and finish in 2020 but if you like after a couple of years you're gonna look back at this time and you was like wow this is where my whole life changed because again uranus which is a planet of revolution change breakthrough sudden events as well it's kind of like also a planet that brings you suddenly something and you don't always know what it is it's like a surprise and it's in your seventh house in the sign of Taurus. I just feel like for you, this process of major changes, of transformation of relationships has already started, like since Uranus went there. And in 2020, it's only like this planetary cycles and planetary influence are only going to reinforce it. I feel like it is definitely because Scorpius is one of the most important years. What I think you need to watch out for is um, 
Neptune is in your fifth house of love and dating. So I feel like for a lot of people, as much as Neptune is a very spiritual planet, so for a lot of Scorpios, there's this longing for this divine love, divine partner. What also tends to happen with Neptune in the fifth house, and especially if you have any planets um, in square signs to, to Pisces, what I think tends to happen here, which is Sagittarius or Gemini, um, what I think tends to happen is that a lot of people also are kind of blinded when it comes to love. Um, there is a sense of not really seeing everything that's out there. Maybe you really want somebody to be this magical lover or this magical person or that soulmate. But very often, I think ever since Neptune went into the sign of Pisces, which was 2011, it's going to stay there till 2026. There was this yearning for love, for this deep love, but unfortunately, I think there were also some disappointments as well. Because again, Neptune sometimes tends to bring us illusions. It's in the higher realms, it is this perfect divine love, but when it comes, unfortunately, often to our 3D world, what tends to happen is that some of it can be also an illusion. So I think that for a lot of you since 2011, there was you know, maybe a little bit more of a painful time period when it came to your love life. And what I think is interesting is when is when Venus goes retrograde, it's going to be square to Neptune. So for a lot of you, maybe this tension or maybe that over idealization or any kind of, you know, unproductive way of looking at love is going to come to its surface with this retrograde. I think for a lot of Scorpios, this year will honestly offer you a good reality check, but it's not going to be a painful reality check. It's more going to be like, okay, been there, done that. I've experienced already everything that was out there. I'm ready for the truth. I'm also ready to really stand in my light and shine very bright. Because again, Mars is the classic ruler of Scorpio, sure. I do think that Pluto is also very important when we're looking at Scorpios as well. And when Pluto here joins again the Saturn and Jupiter as well, this is expansion, but this is not only expansion, this is also your ability to make some concrete foundation changes, build, you know, new, like build new foundation for yourself and really start, you know, doing something big if it's something that you always wanted. Mars in the sixth house is going to require you, is going to require for you to work very, very hard. I think this is one thing that I see coming up. And also, again, if you have debt, if you have any kind of, you know, unresolved disputes, if let's say you're in a job that's not in alignment with your goals in this material world, there is going to be changes in that area in 2020 for sure. Anything else I wanted to say here? Mercury is going to go retrograde quite a few times, but to be honest, I don't find that Mercury retrograde is the most important transit. I personally think that's the only thing that tends to happen during Mercury retrograde. Yes, sure, there is a revelation of some things. Um, maybe you need to revise something. So I'm not going to be focused on this video here. It is going to be in the extended. I'm going to talk about there and also give every, uh, also the specific dates as well. Um, something else I wanted to something else I wanted to mention is that. Around January 8th, actually of 2020, there's going to be a conjunction of Jupiter and South Node. So there could be some kind of connections that are karmic, but a good karmic connection where it means maybe somebody owes you something from a past life and wants to give you a favor, wants to repay you a favor. You could meet this person or there could be some kind of development around January 8th. And also if you're in any kind of spiritual industry or spiritual field, I don't know if you are any kind of uh, healer or anything of that sort, there is going to be quite an interesting developments there as well. You might also choose to let go, forgive someone that might be quite difficult for you. And I think also that entire January, if you are especially in any kind of healing profession or in the spiritual field, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to expand your work as well. Um, bring you know people who really need your help perhaps um again for you i think 2020 the biggest challenge is for you i think to again be productive with your time speak your mind um not be afraid of expressing yourself but if you do feel like it's time to level up or it's time to grow this could be a great great moment to do that because jupiter here will really want you to grow want you to heal maybe in any way you think or communicate. You're going to start becoming more positive in 2020. So if you've been very, especially with Saturn, 
transiting through Capricorn for such a long time and Pluto being there as well, if you've been really kind of like down on yourself, but at the same time been pushing to transform the way you think about this world in 2020 when Jupiter enters there, there's going to be an opportunity for you, like even if there's challenges, even if nothing is going smooth, you're going to start feeling finally more positive. Like you're going to start feeling finally like, you know what? I believe in myself. I believe that things can get better. So again, this is a very brief video here because if I were to speak about everything, every specific transit in detail is going to take a long time. In the extended video, we are going to go f we are going to go through all of the major transits for Scorpios, the dates that you need to pay attention to um what else I was going to say here, the dates, we're going to cover also Mercury retrograde time periods, talk a little bit more in depth about every single other transit. So link for that is below. And also if you want a personalized reading where we're going to go through your own chart, how it works with your chart with natal planets, also do check out. It's currently being offered. So do check it out. I believe if you order before December 1, there is like a deal also for getting free astrology and tarot classes. So do check it out. And anyway, I want to take a couple of tarot cards to also see how all of this is working, you know, energetically for my Scorpio 2020. Let's go. All right. Your card here that wants to come out, King of Pentacles. So again, I think that for a lot of you, there was expansion in your independent earnings, in your independent money, and I think it's been going on already for quite a few years. But with the King of Pentacles, I actually see that this card here is, yes, sure, your own stability is also going to continue to grow. But what I also feel here is that for a lot of you, there might be a person, again, doesn't have to be a romantic partner. For some of you, it could be a romantic partner that could be quite well off. And you might need to, again, learn how to allow yourself to receive from others. For others, it could be a business partner or a business opportunity. Somebody who sees potential in you. Somebody who is like, oh, I see this person, you know, is smart or talented. Let me give them, you know, a chance. Maybe somebody who is in a higher standing than you in career or in your chosen field. King of Pentacles is this person who wants to maybe take a little bit under their wing or maybe just give you an opportunity. They see that something they have or something they can do can really help you. And I feel like this person will. I want to take you one more card for my dear Scorpios for 2020. Let's see what else. And some people, by the way, asking me, like, why am I already so focused on this new year? It is because, honestly, for me, 2019 was a tough one. So I'm like, I'm already, you know, like preparing for the future. We have your judgment. Wow, this is crazy that this one came out. Because I've been talking how I feel just in general. This card, I think, is very much related to this to this transit so for a lot of you it is going to be also a very important year where you're going to have to step up and start speaking your truth change something about the way you communicate and it has to do for you rising from within so whatever you've been suppressing maybe you've been suppressing your true talents your true voice your true opinion your truth about something this is going to be an opportunity for you to rise and to really become a voice you were meant to be with Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto in your third house of communication is going to be very important for you. Let's take you a few more oracle cards. So we have here the Numinous Mystery. And we have here 11th house. I feel like when it comes to your friendships, to your popularity, to groups and organizations you belong to, in 2020, you're going to have a chance to project the persona that you want people to see you as. So I don't see it as negative as like being, again, here you need to speak your truth. You need to be truthful to yourself. But the way I'm seeing this here is that if you want to project, like if you, let's say you have a specific, you know, whether you are a speaker or a singer or any kind of artist, there is some message you want to project to the masses, right? With the numinous here and 11th house, I think you're going to be able to do so, to project whatever it is, the vision, let's say if you're an artist, right, there is always a little bit of what you want people to see. You're going to be able to do this quite well. And also because 11th house card is here, I think for a lot of you, this is going to be um, an opportunity to grow your network, to grow your friendships as well in 2020. Let's see. And pay attention to whatever is happening also in the months of um late august and september because 11th house for you is virgo so late august and september can be important time period for you also if you want to grow your popularity grow your group activities 
All right, and your card here from the Oracle, the crumbling. What are you clinging on to? So guys, whoever is still overly attached to patterns and situations that have outserved them, you're going to be asked to let go something. Whatever it is you're being attached to, whatever it is you're just like holding on to for dear life because you're afraid of this new beginning, of this new chapter, rising up to the person you were meant to be, there's going to be some crumbling there. Not meant to scare you guys, but again, Saturn, Pluto, and, Pluto and Jupiter conjunction, it is very important. This is about us really, really stepping into the destiny who we were meant to be in this world. I was talking about this on Instagram another day. I do believe that 2020 is one of these years where humanity can enter this accelerated portal of awakening. So there is different sources that say that it's about another 200 years where there's going to be a true age of Aquarius, true, you know, golden age, uh, true age of Aquarius, true, true enlightened age on earth. However, it can happen much faster. And I think that there is actually all the time portals for humanity to enter accelerated portal of awakening so that we can avoid unnecessary judgment, so that we can get to a place we are meant to be much faster. You know, I don't want to get distracted here because this is a huge topic. Maybe I will make a video one day on it. But yes, for a lot of people, it is about stepping into true you and your destiny. And all right, we have here the age of life. What I was just talking about, you've been training for this for a lifetime. So it is your destiny. Like you are here, you've been prepared. And this is why Scorpio, you probably had so many difficult lessons, so many difficult experiences because you've been prepared, not just in this lifetime, but in other lifetimes as well to truly step into the destiny of who you are. So let go of whatever doesn't serve you. The age of light, what I was telling you about, this is about when we can step in into our true destiny, into who we truly are, we are also making the process of, you know, of the new age coming into and really being here also much sooner. So anyway, guys, this is where I'm going to end. I think it's a beautiful reading. So again, there's going to be an extended version of this where we're going to go in depth through all the transits, all the dates, specific things you need to take a look at in the description box. You can purchase this. And also there's a personalized 2020 recorded video for you with also a report and a mini birth chart reading as well available if you order before December 1, I believe. Also, it includes classes and other little freebies for you. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I wish you an amazing new year whenever you watch this and we're going to talk soon. Okay, bye-bye.